Hi everyone, I'm here today to tell you about some things that I have been loving recently. Everything I can link will be linked in the description box down below. However, I don't have many things like physically to hold and show you today. It's mainly going to be a telling. I have a list of things to tell you about. And the first thing that I want to tell you about is a favourite but also an announcement. And I wasn't sure which video to put it in. I could have made a whole separate video but I didn't feel that that was necessary. So I'm just going to show it to you now. So many of you know I write... Um, well, I write books, but I have a children's picture book series that I do with Katie Harnett. She's the illustrator, so she does the pictures. I do the words. The first book is Franklin's Flying Bookshop. The sequel is called Franklin and Luna Go to the Moon. And we have a third book coming out in September, which I've mentioned before, but I haven't shown you the cover or told you what it's about. So that's quickly what I'm going to do right now. It's called Franklin and Luna and the Book of Fairy Tales. This is the cover here. And the blurb is... Today is Franklin's birthday, he's turning 606. He thinks his friends have all forgotten they haven't sent him any gifts. So it's Franklin's birthday and he thinks his friends have forgotten, but actually they're planning a huge surprise birthday party for him. So to distract him from all of that preparation, Luna takes him to a bookshop with her pet tortoise, Neil Armstrong. Neil discovers a book that is bound up in padlocks and says don't open, but he's quite naughty and curious so he ignores all of those warnings, opens this book of fairy tales and gets sucked inside. So Franklin and Luna have to dive inside the book after him to rescue him and on their way they meet a host of fairy tale characters, not all of whom are friendly. Will they make it back in time for the party? Who knows? Well, I know, and you will find out in a few months too. It's all about the wonders and perils of getting lost inside a good book. I really hope you like it. As you can see, it's kind of on theme slash brand for me, and I've had so much fun doing it. Katie's illustrations are beautiful. It is available for pre-order, so I'll leave links in the description box down below. It's several months away, but I just wanted to tell you about it, because it's exciting. And that leads me on to other favourites. So other favourites from the past month have been Franklin events. So I often go into schools or do events in museums or at book festivals doing storytelling events for children. But what I've been doing more of recently is teaching kids and I've been teaching poetry workshops and it has been the best because their imaginations are just amazing. So for World Book Day, which was at the beginning of March, I was teaching in a school all day, running half hour poetry workshops with every class in the school. So I was running around from beginning to end. It was intense, but great. And I have many more events like that planned over the coming months. If you're a representing a bookshop, festival, school, museum, whatever, and you're interested in me coming along to teach, there are details on my website, which I'll link down below. But yeah, World Book Day, if you're not familiar, is a wonderful day where we celebrate children and books and reading and primary school kids dress up as their favourite school, as their favourite school characters, as their favourite book characters. And something I hadn't anticipated was that some children might dress up as Franklin and Luna. And when those pictures started coming through on Instagram and Twitter on World Book Day, I got really, really emotional. I never really considered that they might be children's favourite book characters. That just seems completely bizarre to me still, uh, but absolutely magical and wonderful. And I wanted to share some photos because there was some amazing parent DIY costume making going on. So I'm gonna insert some pictures here so that you can see some of them. And also something that I've bought this month I was, it was, I was thinking it was going to be for me for events, but it is very small. It's going to have to be for a child, but that's probably for the best. I spied it on Merry Merry, which is a website where I have bought party stuff. Um, they do baking things. They also do great jewellery. But they had a dragon costume, which looks like this. Let's see if I can show it properly. Can you see? So this part is a cape. And then this is a mask that the kid can wear too. And it looks very like Franklin. I mean, not it's not a spot on. This is the back. It's got ridges on the back. It's not a spot on Franklin, obviously, but it's the same colour um, and the same um, markings as well on his face. And I just thought it was really delightful. So I've got that for storytelling events because I use lots of props when I do events with children. And if you happen to be in the market for a dragon costume, I'll leave it linked down below. I don't imagine any of you will be, but you know, it's there if you need it. Another favorite from the past month has been helping out bookshops. As you guys know, I love bookshops very much. I worked as a bookseller for 10 years. I've written four books about bookshops. I like them a lot. And there were two crowdfunding campaigns that came up. And I think 
the latter is still open so if you would like to support it that would be amazing but two crowdfunding um, things for bookshops so the first one was for Mr B's Emporium in Bath this was actually before March but they've just open so they're an amazing independent bookshop in Bath I love them very much I've done several events with them in the past they are good eggs but they wanted to expand into the shop next door and open a big children's section so they had a crowdfunding for that I think it was just before Christmas so I pledged then and if you go to Mr B's now in their new children's section you can find um, a writing desk that has my name on it so I'm going to claim it I'm going to go and sit there one day and actually do some writing um, but it was a real joy to be able to support the wonderful things that they do but the other one that's still crowdsourcing is Glass Bookshop which is being set up by our very own Jason Purcell now Jason is a I was going to say a bookseller he's going to be a bookseller he is a bookseller he's a booktuber too his channel is fantastic he doesn't upload that much anymore but I'll link him in the description box if you've been around for a fair few years then you may remember him from when he uploaded more regularly but he's opening a bookshop with his friend in Alberta in Canada which is very exciting sadly quite far away so I don't know when I'll get to visit it in the flesh but I was very happy to be able to support it so if you would like to support it as well there are perks there are tiers I'll link it down below please go and show them some love next on my favorites list we have these yeah, I am showing knickers in a video on the internet. I didn't think that that would be a thing that I would ever be doing. These are period pants and this may sound like an overstatement, but I feel like they've slightly changed my life. I have been meaning to get period pants for ages. I've just been trying to figure out the best ones to get. She thinks are the ones that have been advertised everywhere, or at least I've seen advertised everywhere. But you have to pay import duty on those because they come over from the States. And even though they say that they stock in Selfridges, I have never been able to find any in stock there at all. Lauren told me that Moddy Body were very good, so I decided to purchase some. And yeah, they're very good. This is not hashtag spawn, not ad, not gifted, none of that. I just need to tell you about these things. So period pants, if you're not familiar with them, they're just like underwear, but they are absorbent. These ones can take up to two tampons worth, I think they say, two like heavy flow tampons worth. So you can wear these knickers all through the day and they absorb so quickly, quicker I would say than a pad. And then once you take them off, you rinse them under a cold tap and then you throw them in the wash with um, other delicates on a delicate wash and that's it and then you keep using them. So I have, I think, five or six. They are expensive, they're about 20 pounds each, but that's a one-off payment that you're making and then you're not repurchasing every month and they're so much better for the environment. I'm not someone who is able to use a menstrual cup, so I have been using sanitary products and I've been worried about how wasteful that is. And I had been worried that these wouldn't work. I thought that they wouldn't be very absorbent, I thought they might leak, I thought, I, I just thought they might be cumbersome, all of the things, and all of the things I thought were wrong because they're not cumbersome, they absorb really quickly, no leakage at all. I feel more comfortable wearing these than I do wearing sanitary pads. So I just had to tell you about that because, I mean, as I said, I feel like it slightly changed my life. Another favourite, RuPaul's Drag Race. I'm not going to talk a lot about that because I am so late to the party. My best friend Dan was horrified that I had never watched RuPaul's Drag Race, so he made me watch some of it. Then I fell in love, and then Mr. M and I have watched season 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and we're all caught up on season 11 as well. So that's pretty much what we've been doing for about an hour every night before bed. We've been watching that, plus we were both sick for a couple of days, and it was very good. I was gonna say sick time watching, it's good any time watching, it's so much fun, I love it. Back in the day, I did used to watch America's Next Top Model back in my uni days, and this is like that, but so much better, amazing. If you haven't seen it, I mean, I, I don't know how I had never seen it, so I imagine probably everybody has, but if you haven't, please go watch it. It's on Netflix, it's great. Then a couple of other favourites, there is a person on Instagram called Carly Hope Brown and she's doing an amazing project where she is illustrating, she's drawing, painting people with disabilities and disfigurements for a visibility project that she's been doing. She asked if she could do a portrait of me and underneath the illustration she done does a very brief 
Q&A about the condition that the person has. So I said yes and she painted me and that's now on her Instagram. So go over to her Instagram, not because she's painted me, but because of the project that she's doing as a whole. I think it's an amazing project. Go over and check her out, see what she's doing, send her some love. And speaking of illustration, I have been loving Emma Carpenter art on YouTube. Emma is an absolute sweetheart and I find her videos so, so calming. She does book illustration, she does pins, she does um, mermaid reading pins, which I've shown in a favorites video before, because I love them. If you need something soothing to watch with a cup of tea, go and check her out. I'll link her down below. My final favorite was going to see the stage production of Grief is a Thing with Feathers at the Barbican, starring Killian Murphy. You know how much I love Max's book. I think it's fantastic. And this adaptation was so, lovingly done. It was different, but also had all of, not all of the best bits from the book, because I suppose I'm always going to prefer the book, but it took so much and adapted it so well that it, it was hard to remember what was in the book and what wasn't, because it was, it was just so well blended. It's basically a one-man show of Killian Murphy being outrageously talented for an hour and a half, plus small parts by the two young actors who play his sons. If you haven't read Grief is a Thing with Feathers, it's about a Ted Hughes scholar who loses his wife, he has two young boys, and then Crow, Ted Hughes's Crow, visits his house as like this embodiment of grief and taunts the family until they, they are ready for him to leave. In the play, Killian plays both the dad and Crow as if he is becoming Crow and he uses different microphones when he's doing that. And something I had never really considered when reading Grief is a Thing with Feathers was that Crow might be scary. He was just always, I don't know, patronising and snarky and not very nice, but I never imagined him as terrifying. But dear God, Killian is absolutely <laughs> terrifying. I, uh, I nearly weed myself, I have to say. But it's also funny and moving and all of the things that you would hope it would be. It's completely sold out. It's running until the, uh, I think the 13th of April, so it's not on for much longer, but you can always check on the Barbican website to see if they have returns. My ticket was very kindly gifted by Faber, but you know how much I love the book. I would have bought a ticket anyway. As I said, everything that I can link, I'll link in the description box down below. Those are all the things I've been loving recently. Let me know what you've been enjoying recently. I would love to know, and I will speak to you guys very soon. Lots of bookish love, bye.